Hey everybody and welcome to Positively Nerdy's Lego Maniacal. Here back again for our third, technically, video. This will be number two, but there are three videos in this series now. And we are finally going to that galaxy far, far away. That's right, we are finally doing a Star Wars set. I know finally sounds a little bit weird considering we've only done three of these things. But lately, especially for the past several years, the last couple months have been a little different. But lately for me, it's Star Wars Legos or no Legos. Nine times out of ten I'm getting Star Wars. Legos are expensive, you guys all know this. Not have places to put them. Star Wars and Legos are two things I love very much, so getting them both together is practical, I guess. So we are finally getting to a Lego set, and not just any Lego set, kind of the catalyst for Lego Maniacal. This is the set that made me want to do a video show about Lego. I've had this set since August. I've been in the works with this video for that long, and I think we're finally getting there enough, close enough, to where I want this show to be, to finally bust this set out. But mostly, I'm just tired of waiting. For me to have a Lego set in its box for that long is outrageous. So, how about I stop babbling, we get right to it. It is set number, let me double check, 9496, the Desert Skiff, with 213 pieces, four minifigs, and the Sarlacc Pit, which doesn't really count as a minifig, but isn't really a vehicle or a base either, so we'll say four and a half minifigs. Retailing at about $25. A little disconcerting because this set came out early last year. It's one of the older wave of sets. The new wave of sets just came out. Uh, you will also notice the new wave of sets has the Yoda packaging on them. Really sharp looking Yoda packaging actually. I kind of like it a lot. The new A-Wing fighter that just came out in the most recent wave of LEGO sets is also retailing at about $25. It has 40-ish less pieces and one less minifig. Really hope that's not a sign of things to come. That we got this set, again, a lot more pieces and another minifig, which again accounts for some of those pieces, but you guys know what I mean. And it's the same price as a set with far, in my opinion, far fewer pieces and one less minifig for the same price. So hopefully Lego's not going down that path, but we can talk about Lego and finances and what it does to all of our wallets another time. Let's finally open this sucker up and take a look at what we got. Probably should have picked up the box. I do love that sound. Yeah, definitely gonna pre cut the box next time. Sorry about this. Alright, let's find out what's inside. Whoa, a lot more than I thought. The always popular instruction booklet. Couldn't do much without this. Three loose pieces, which is kind of weird. Not sure why those are like that. And three bags labeled as such, and uh, that one, two of the three, bags number one and two, have bags inside of them. So let's not wait any longer. I cannot wait to get this thing open. Come on, guys. Let's put this thing together. guys. It says on the box that it came with four minifigs, and here they are, locked in combat above the Sarlacc pit. And it said all four of them were new. So while we're taking a look at these minifigs, why don't we take a closer look at what makes them new. 
Let's start with everyone's favorite bounty hunter, Boba Fett. Now there's no denying that this guy's come a long way, as have most of the LEGO minifigs. But this guy looks an awful lot like his 2010 appearance with the Slave 1. And well, since I have the Slave 1 set, let's take a closer look for a segment a friend of mine likes to call Similarity Time! No, wait, that's... that's not it. It's, um... Uh... COMPARABILITY TIME! No, 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 never mind. Let's just look at the two minifigs side by side. Okay, what a different some, um, contrasting time makes. When lined up side by side like this, it's pretty obvious what differences the two Bobas have. So all it takes is a new pair of britches and a blaster to be considered new. And I guess the new label makes a lot more sense now. The new label is certainly appropriate for Disguise Lando, since we haven't seen him in this outfit since 2006. This version is a dramatic improvement over the previous figure. The paint app on the helmet might seem terrible, but it's more a product of the close-up picture taking. He'll look just fine sitting on your shelf. And if I was as handsome and dashing as Billy D, they'd never get me to cover up my face. Hello, what have we here? Lando's figure also features the best back printing of the minifigs included in this set. Now that we're getting the hang of the new designation, Luke's updates are obvious as well. Updated might be a better word, but it certainly isn't as catchy as new. Like Lando, it's been a long time since we've seen Luke in this outfit, but we'll be seeing him again in it real soon with the Rancor pit. And finally, we come to the only truly new figure in the set, the Clatoonian assassin, Kathaba. Kathaba, I assume, is Hatties for Sarlacc fodder, since that's about all this guy is good for. That's it for the minifigs, let's see him in action. For me, LEGO sets fall into two groups, sets that have a lot of playability, and sets that have a lot of display ability. Desert Skiff plays great, as you can hopefully see from these photos, but also looks great displayed on the LEGO shelf, the Star Wars shelf, or wherever you choose to display it in your collection. But we're leaving out an important element of this set, an element that adds value to both playability and displayability options. This super cool addition is the best Sarlacc Pit representation yet. With flexible tentacles and a great base including all those nasty looking teeth. And you special edition haters, be warned, the mighty beak is included. And best of all, it's the perfect size to capture a minifig. Oh, like say our friend Boba here. This means that you can now reenact Lando's ridiculous scream Although it appears here that Lando is still one cool customer. Or you can reenact the Expanded Universe tale of Boba Fett's escape from the Sarlacc Pit. At least it's EU for now. We'll see what we learn in Episode 7. The Sarlacc Pit adds a lot of fun elements to this LEGO set, something that was sorely missing the last time we got a standalone Skiff set. In fact, the whole set has undergone a significant upgrade. So once again, it's juxtaposition time! Damn it, that's not it either! The last time we got a standalone skiff was in 2000. Some of you watching this might not have even been born then. There was a skiff included with the Jabba's Sail Barge set in 2006, the same set that included the only previous appearance of Lando in disguise. There has been criticism against LEGO for re-releasing the same sets over and over. While popular vehicles like the X-Wings or the Millennium Falcon might seem to come out frequently, it's hard to argue against a new version of the Desert Skiff, and even harder to dispute LEGO's commitment to improvement with each re-release. The two sets side by side, including the minifigs, certainly makes my case for me. Well that's about it for this set, again the new Desert Skiff is a great combination of playability and displayability, with new, yes new, minifigs and a long overdue upgrade. 
The entire scene involving the Sarlacc Pit is one of the best the saga has to offer, especially in the music. And it's great to now have such a terrific set to help recreate it. Now we just need that new sail barge set to get here. Thanks for tuning in to Lego Maniacal, and we'll see you again real soon. You really are an improvement when you compare you to the... It's comparison time!